from La Romania, Dominican Republic, Yuri Labazuka Sedeno. From Atlanta, Georgia, Antonio Primo Todd. Check yourself at all times. Rot ahead to run to Stockton. Trunks are good, wanna swipe you. Eury Cedeño's robe as he goes over to his brother Hendry, who he sparred as late as last week. It said, Te amo, papi. And that means I love you, dad, because his father, Aquino, died when he was 15 years old. He was left without his coach, without his mentor. But he says, I do this in honor of my father, who once guided Javier Fortuna to the featherweight world title. So he knew how to make champions. He created two fighters. Eudy Cedeño's unbeaten, 7-0-1. His brother is 12-0 with 10 knockouts as a pro. You know, when I saw his name on the card, I started learning about his history, Cedeño. He was a guy that I was looking forward to seeing. You know, first off, just looking at him, good stature, tall, looks strong. He's a southpaw, which makes it a little bit more difficult for orthodox fighters. And he has a ton of amateur experience. 400 plus fights for this Southpaw who, along with his brother, participated in the Lima Pan Am Games. I was there covering boxing and the Dominican Republic has really grown. His loss was to Arlen Lopez Ooh. of Cuba. So you see a good combination. And he says, my trainer once my father passed away uh, was Cuban native Armando Hernandez. And what happened there, Tim, and you see that with the current crop of uh, young Dominican fighters coming up, he says, we got that great lineage of Dominican fighting yeah. with that school of Cuban boxing, and that's a great combination coming up. Yes, it is. And you could tell just by the, by the angles he's using set to set up his left hand and his right hook, moving side to side. Oh, it looks like he has really good eyes. Doesn't mind being comfortable. You know, doesn't mind actually occupying or, or, or taking the space mid-range. Enjoys being close to his opponent. You know, with the Cuban style, they're, they're great counterpunchers, but a lot of them are not really aggressive. They're aggressive when they need to be. However, Cedeno likes to fight on the front foot a bit. Oh. Nice counter left from Cedeno, and then well, he follows it up. Well, <laughs> He's on the three, three in a row. Wow. I mean, how many times you got to get with the left to know that you need to move your head one or pick your pick your guard up? That's what I happened mean, to Abdullah Mason's opponent last week. <laughs> well. That was actually set up beautifully by Adela Mason. And he had already been dropped. Yes. So, yes. Nice short right hook now from Cedeno, showing that he's got more to his arsenal. And Antonio Todd is looking at that clock. There's 45 seconds left here in this first round. This fight is not competitive at all. I think the referee's going to have to step in sooner or later. You know, but this is professional boxing. You know, eight counts only happen when there's a knockdown. But Todd continuously getting hit with these big shots, not moving his head, and really not, don't have a whole lot of offense. You see he's arm punching right there, reaching as well. Ooh, there's that straight left once again from Eudy Cedeno. Yesterday after the weigh-in, I saw Eudy and his brother Henry walking down 8th Avenue, Tim, in shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> they're from the Dominican Republic. They okay they're supposed the to be freezing. Yeah, they're he supposed to be. He lives in Pennsylvania. Oh, that's what it that is. That explains it. Getting that close-up shot of Eudy Cedeno. You see that tattoo of the Olympic rings on his neck. He said, I only have two other tattoos. The one on my right leg is the year of my birth, 1999. The one on my left leg is 2015, the year my father passed away. Yeah, the southpaw, the southpaw advantage is, is that they're used to the angles coming from the orthodox. That's what their advantages are. I mean, an orthodox fighter can do the same thing, if not similar to a, a southpaw you know, uh, vice versa. However, orthodox fighters are not used to fighting southpaws. That's why you gotta get comfortable. I, I would advise all the young fighters out there, you know, spar southpaws on a consist consistent basis. Each of them are a little bit different, but the rules stay the same. Mm. You know, getting your foot placed on the outside, you don't necessarily have to force it because if you force it, you become predictable. 
and the southpaw will be able to read it. However, getting that foot on the outside, having lead hand control as well, keeping your hand on top of his lead hand, and trying to land your backhand and your left hook. And right now, you see Cedeno just going to work. Yeah, and don't let him hit you five times in a row. I mean, but the shots are not, I mean, the shots, they, you know, slowly breaking down to Todd. Todd is taking them well. But if Cedeno was to go down to that body, now that's different. He'll be able to weaken them a little bit more, get those hands dropped even more, and he can soften them up and then possibly take them out later in the fight. He's been durable. He's Ooh. went eight rounds with Troy Isley in July of 2023. So if Cedeno's able to look sharper than Isley, then that really tells you something about this Dominican fighter and where he's headed. Yeah, nice good. right. That's a stiff jab as stab jab. Todd was... Trying to find an angle. See, Todd is just outgunned. He's outgunned. Not much coming on his punches. Not much heat coming on his punches. I mean, he's trying, but the defensive prowess right now of Cedeno is a little bit too much. Great angles as well. I saw I saw Todd also turn southpaw, trying mm -hmm. to switch things up, but it didn't go too well from, from that <laughs> stance either. Ooh, that's a nice jab once again from Cedeno. Body work with the right. Not really listening about going down to the body. No. Still head hunting. Yeah, I mean, you get used to that. I mean, when you have a long extensive of amateur career like Cedeno did, you know, you're going to you're gonna throw punches at the yeah. head because you really don't get, you know, you really don't get uh, you know, points or credit when you go down to the body in the amateurs. That's why a lot of times, you know, once a fighter makes the transition from the amateurs to the pros, we're like, we talk about how some fighters have that, pro style as amateurs yeah. and some bring that amateur style into the pros. Yeah. That's to continue to improve and he's showing that each and each and every time he steps foot in that side that ring. So um you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what I'm going to see this time. What new wrinkle he's going to add to his game in this fight. He's facing a southpaw, a tricky southpaw, too, at that. Absolutely. And three of his last six opponents, as you mentioned, had a 15-1 and one record. So no easy touches no. for Tiger Johnson. And you know what? He wouldn't have it any other way. But that's going to make him better. Absolutely. You know, you got to be battle-tested. And then when you get to the top, you can remain at the top. You're used to that type of resistance coming at you. You know, it's just not the physical also work, it's the mental aspect as well. Because you, you see the record and you're like, oh, okay. But when you see a, a glaring record, like an undefeated record, 23-0, and 0, it doesn't bother you as much. Yeah, and the fact that, you know, the advancement under, yeah. um, you know, first of all, Ronald Safo uh -huh. is a man who trained not only Tiger, but his trainer, P.J. Brewer. Um, but also the way he's sitting down on his punches and sitting in the pocket more. That's what he was talking about. You know, Coach, I call him the prophet, honestly. <laughs> you know, uh, was a great, was, was a pretty uh, decent uh, professional at that. You know, had some bumps along the road. However, if he can do it differently, he would. However, I think that his, his calling is coaching. Yep. I really do. And that's what he's doing with Tiger. Um, but... To your point, there he's gonna be. He about to get a lot yeah, out of there. Right hook, he's going for it. But to your point about uh, sitting down on his punches, he said that Tiger needs to take a little bit off the speed. Tiger likes to get out of range as well. A lot of the times, if he takes a little bit off the uh, off the speed and just focus on the technique, he he can be, he can be able to deliver more knockouts. Cedeno is really, it's just really relaxed, honestly. It's like a sparring session right now for him. Target practice in spots. You know, Todd to be here as long as Cedeno allows him to be here. You know, Cedeno just really taking his time. No sense of urgency whatsoever. Um, it's still the third round right now. But if he wants to have a chance of, of, of stopping or hurting Todd, he's gonna have to dig down to that body because Todd can take a punch upstairs. I think that's the frustration in the corner with Daniel Garrido telling Eldi Sedeno, you gotta focus downstairs. There's guys that are gonna be able to take your best shots yeah. to the head, but not many can handle the work downstairs. And that's what they want Eldi Sedeno to focus on here at the end of round number three.
Tonight's main event on ESPN will feature the second title defense of Oshaki Foster. He'll be taking on Abraham Supernova, mascot and all. Both guys have proven himself, but this is the end of the round. Not all you see, Daniel, just target practice again. A lot of bad habits coming from Todd. Doesn't have a real, doesn't really have a full arsenal whatsoever. Not really good defense. Daniel should, he should get this guy up out of here, man. I mean, he has enough time to work, you know, a few more rounds to be able to get him up out of there. But I'll be impressed if he can get him up, up out of there, man. I really would. Yeah, he has to make Benji Estevez, the referee, do his job. And it looked like it was close to coming to an end yeah. at the end of the third round. Now he's got Antonio Todd on skates. Can he put him on the canvas? Nice body work here. Beautiful left uppercut from Eudy Cedeno. Just an offensive clinic. Look, this is this is not competitive. A referee yeah. needs to step in and do something. I mean, I could see if if Todd was was doing some work here and there, but he's not really landed anything significant in this fight so far. And it's all going downhill for Todd right now. Yeah, Eudy Cedeno just looking for that one shot that will end this fight. And you see the blood coming out of the mouth of Antonio Todd, unable to do much in there tonight against the Southpaw Dominican who represented his country in the Tokyo Olympics and continues to do so with pride inside the ring. One thing you can't deny Todd, durability is unbelievable and his ability to take a shot. Lost to Anthony Sims, Joseph Hicks, Troy Isley. You know, his last four losses, Tim, his opponents had a combined record of 52-0-1. So you talk about durability, you talk about heart, mm -hmm. Todd has it in spades. Yeah. But sometimes it's the job of the corner and the referee to protect a fighter from himself. And I mean, he's taking some straight I mean, hard what shots. Is, what, is, what is he here for? I mean, is yeah. he here to win or is he here for pride or is he here for the, or for the bag? He's here for the bag. I mean, he's outgunned. He's cutting out He's with cut, the right eye. Bleeding out of the mouth. Again, hasn't landed anything significant whatsoever. I mean, it's gonna go downhill from here from here on, on from here on. So Ooh, there's that straight left once again from Eldi Cedeno. And these are clean punches. And yeah. it's also telling the story as well. Can Cedeno punch? Yeah. Is he a real puncher? No, he's not. He's more of a break you down type of guy. And Tim, he started his career 5-0. Five knockouts and yeah. toe two zero oh, and one had that draw in between with one knockout. So as the level of opposition has increased, his punching power has seen a decrease. You know, I'm curious to hear about that draw. You know, we didn't get a chance to talk to him in the fighter meetings, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear what was the excuse of that draw because when you have as much skill and has as much knowledge as Sedano, you shouldn't have a you shouldn't have a draw on yes, your really? resume this early, man. You shouldn't. Ooh, nice overhand right once again from El Di Cedeno. We're going to hear the bell and listen to the corner, see what they're telling Antonio Todd. It's simple. It's target practice. I mean, Todd don't have really thing, any firepower coming back at him, Bernardo. I mean, right. And I think that Benji Estevez, the third man in the ring, is going to have them on a short leaf but, here. Be, but, short leash. But Esteban, I mean, Esteban doesn't, I mean, he, why do you got to ask the corner? It's your job. It's your job. That's the ref job. The ref job is the safety of the fighter. That is ultimately the ref job. And there's that straight left once again from Eudy Cedeno. <laughs> he set that up with a lo nice little level change right there to come around with the left hand or the right hook, then the left hand down the middle. Some clever stuff for Cedeno, but I mean, I see a lot of holes in this game as well. And I mean, again, he's not, he's not feeling any type of resistance coming back at him. So he's, you know, fighters, we will make mistakes if we don't feel fear. We'll do whatever we want. We will get in terrible positions, but you gotta stay disciplined with your craft. That's the important part, because moving forward, it becomes a habit in there. You know, if you continue to do this over and over and fight in this level of competition. So it's important moving forward. So Daniel, we know he got this win, unless something crazy happens, <laughs> but he needs to get more disciplined with his craft. You know, we talk about these young fighters who go through and blow by so many fighters early on in their careers and then when they face the minimal resistance all of a sudden they're bewildered they're not used to yeah. it yeah and, and that, absolutely that's the opposite case in our next fight with tiger who has had tough fights yeah. tough opposition who have asked questions of him early and that prepares him later on for yes. his career as you mentioned earlier Tim. you're absolutely right you're absolutely right 
And there is Tiger Johnson. That young man went to the Olympics, has a great group of coaches behind him. Two voices that have the same mind, Tim, from the ground up. Look, Stafo is who built PJ. Yes. Think about that. Now he has this young pugilist who is PJ. Now Tiger, who is listening to his direction. But, Bowie, you know, it's a team effort, no doubt about it. But, man, it's great to see. And then the, the lack of ego from Renard Safo to say, hey, you know what? If you have such a great relationship with Tiger, yes. PJ, why don't you train him? And I'm just going to chime in here and there and try to give you my thoughts and my experience. And, and I think it's building a great team. It is. And when you've got a race car like Tiger that can go, it just makes for a wonderful situation. Agreed. Even Tiger agrees. Yeah, I, I do. You know, Tiger, what I love about Tiger is is that he's he's optimistic and he likes to learn. The fight's over. Good. Good. That's it. Good. And what Daniel gets his seventh stoppage in eight great. wins. Antonio Todd, he's willing to continue fighting. He's of willing course. to take punishment. Of course. He took Troy Isley the distance in he's July 2023. But this is the job of the referee. If the corner won't save a fighter from himself, he has to do it. And that's what Benji Estevez finally stepped in with two minutes and 39 this seconds isn't, left. This isn't about being the tough guy. I mean, of course, da the damage like that. I mean, shot after shot. And you're not doing anything in return. I mean, you, if a guy hit me, I'm going to hit him back. And I'm going to try. And body language right there. I mean, he's comfortable. Todd is used to this type of beating. You can tell. He's used to it. His corner said, I know how much he can take. But at the same time, it's unnecessary damage, man. What are you really here for? Are you here to win? Because you're not showing it. The mentioned referee, Benji Estevez. Benji. Let's send it up to Mark Chinook for the time of the stop. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the theater at Madison Square Garden, referee Benji Estevez calls a halt to this bout at two minutes, 39 seconds of round number five. Declaring your winner by technical knockout, Yuri Lavazuka Cedeno.